Virtual reality exists for one reason. Immersion. 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 What exactly is it? How is it accomplished? And most importantly, how is it going to kill VR? Really? I spent all that time making a cinematic intro and half of you are gone already? What can I do to improve retention? Oh yeah! Immersion is quite the marketing buzzword, so let's cut through the crap. What? Immersion is that intangible special sauce that makes a game feel like a time machine. You fire it up and tell yourself, oh, I'll just play for half an hour. And before you know it, you've got seven missed calls and you're now unemployed. And what could possibly be more immersive than actually being in the game? Your eyes are here, your hands are here, and if you're a rich little bitch, your entire body is too. When I was younger, I remember spending godless amounts of hours in a little game called Halo Reach. And thanks to VR, I can revisit those memories in an entirely new way. VR is something that I truly love, but despite a decade of technological advancement and billions of dollars in funding, it exists as an afterthought in most gamers' mind. Let's talk about why. VR exists in stark contrast to traditional gaming. For example, to do something simple like reload a gun, instead of pressing a button, you have to actually reload. Wow, so immersive. It sounds simple on paper. Reload the gun. But when you break it down, it starts to get more complex. In modern first-person shooters, there exist two kings. The AR-15 and its derivatives, and the trusty AK-47 and its own many, many derivatives. You could likely identify these rifles based simply on nothing but their magazine shape, or maybe even something as simple as the round that they use. But that makes you special. Really? I'm already losing you? Fine, I'll do it again. Not every adult knows how firearms work and how they vary from platform to platform. In certain cases, that's a good thing. But that knowledge barrier acts as exactly that, a barrier to entry. VR is absolutely riddled with these barriers to entry. From the extremely common problem of motion sickness, something that statistically you're familiar with, or something even more basic like, how the hell do you reload if you don't have another arm? All of these issues culminate into the VR curse, aka an abysmally low player count. Veil VR, a multi-million dollar project, 25 daily players, the insanely well-made Into the Radius, 200 peak players in the last month. Not even Valve's own Half-Life Alex is safe with only 359 players. It's fucking Half-Life. What is the single common thread between all of these games? Besides the fact that they're all shooters, that genre is extremely popular on every other platform, I think the problem may have something to do with those barriers of entry that I was talking about earlier. I was cherry picking some of the games that I was talking about earlier, so let's look at the whole story, which, spoiler alert, isn't much better. This is SteamDB. It's a database full of players' information for free. If we disregard the common VR utilities like XS Overlay, OVR Toolkit, and Advanced Settings, the three most played VR only games are Beat Saber, Gorilla Tag, and Blade and Sorcery. So what do they do different? For starters, the concept behind each of these games is very simple. Beat Saber is a rhythm game and a really good one at that. Gorilla Tag is just tag with a bit of a twist. And Blade and Sorcery is an unhinged violent simulator. No deep narratives, no hyper complex core mechanics, and visuals that are less than cutting edge. Are they any less immersive for it? I launched Blade and Sorcery to get B-roll for this video and ended up spending two hours committing some of the most heinous acts of violence that haven't been witnessed since the first crusade. Even then, all of these games have player counts that make it hard to believe that VR is allegedly a $25 billion industry. Zenith, an honest-to-god VR-only MMO, had a total of about 28 players online when I recorded this video. Where the hell is everyone? To find the games that actually keep VR afloat, we have to look at an entirely different category. These are all games that support VR, but don't require it. As soon as we look at these player counts, it makes a lot more sense. Taking a quick look, the vast majority of these are simulators, being flight or racing sims with the odd train sim thrown in. Honestly, it looks kind of fun. And of course, right near the top, we have VR chat. You can buy and play these games all without a VR headset, and in the case of VR chat and most other social VR games, for free entirely. These games are the gateway drug. Aceto Corsa is a great example. Using Using mods, you can drive pretty much any car you want, anywhere you want to, with amazing physics. You can join in on flat screen with your wheel and pedals, but inevitably it puts a little thought into your head. It'd be pretty cool to try this in VR, wouldn't it? Or Microsoft Flight Sim. You have the ability to fly anywhere on planet Earth completely modeled. Why not go and land a pelican on your front lawn? Wouldn't it be cool to try that in VR? And then of course, VR chat. Many of you already know my first experience with VR chat. We do a little trolling, it's called we do a little trolling. I got bit. I got my hands on an original vibe as quickly as possible. VR chat is many people's gateway to VR. Even the people 
people that have to deal with the quest support optimization and constant crashes get sucked in. I would really love to see an FPS game that works this way and see what VR users have to say about it, like whether it's an advantage or disadvantage to use all of their VR gear. Oh wait, Payday 2 does that already and it's at the top of the charts. This style of VR gives people the best of both worlds, while providing the game with a much more stable player count. As a passionate VR user suffering from Stockholm Syndrome, I would really love to see more games go this route. Statistically speaking, going for VR only is an almost guaranteed death sentence despite what VR YouTubers would want you to believe. And I really don't mean to call out any fellow content creators, but it really is frustrating being part of the VR community and seeing just how lazy and out of touch their opinions are. Never mind the fact that they are constantly hyping up games that they know won't have a player base a week after launch for the sake of having something to upload that week. Or even better yet, every single quest update that comes out, they hound on it like rabid dogs saying it's a game changer. I apologize for that little rant, but it serves a purpose. Recently, a highly anticipated VR title launched. Firewall Ultra. And instead of it being criticized for being yet another generic shooter, content creators have decided to take issue with it for some really dumb reasons. One of the most common criticisms boils down to this. It doesn't take advantage of BR fully. AKA, the controls are streamlined and focused. Instead of using motion controls to perform a reload or plant a bomb, the game just lets you click a button. Instead of trying to learn all the ins and outs of each weapon platform, you can focus on playing the game, learning the maps, and killing the bad guys. Gameplay should always take precedence over realism. It simply doesn't matter if it's realistic, if it's annoying to play. VR can already be annoying enough. From what I understand, the rest of the game is pretty janky and rife with grinding to gain levels and equipment. But people complaining on Twitter about something as simple as a reload button, saying that VR is past that, with complete disregard for accessibility, really just makes us look like the tone-deaf idiots that we are. Especially when a hardcore mode will be added shortly by the devs to appease all eight of the players who want maximum immersion. I'm playing VR to escape reality. Why would I want to replicate it? I've said this before and I'll say it again. VR developers are focused on all of the wrong things. When they look at creating a new game for us, they think immersion. And so they do everything that immersion usually entails like realistic weapon mechanics that are simply alienating to an already tiny audience. I don't think it's coincidence that some of my best experiences I've had in VR are thanks to games that were made for flat screen first and received VR support later on, or games that got their own VR port entirely, like Fallout 4, Skyrim, No Man's Sky, and Subnautica, or even the amazing mods from Luke Ross that turned Cyberpunk into the single most immersive VR game that I have ever played. It is well worth the asking price. After my last video bitching about VR games, between the people telling me that it's a skill issue and kids telling me that I should unalive myself, many of you left comments recommending games for me to try out, and over and over again Vertigo 2 kept being mentioned, so I gave it a shot. And holy cow is there a lot that this game does right. A distinct art style, funky music, a well-written and light-hearted story, and most importantly, guns that feel just right and are easy enough to reload in the heat of the moment. I have thoroughly enjoyed Vertigo 2 despite being really bad at it, and I really thank you all for that recommendation. Just like I thank this video's sponsor, you! We've got three new beings to welcome. The ever-gracious Nyx, please stop bullying me for not liking horror games, my old buddy Chow Pound, and the legendary Dr. Roboto. I really appreciate the support from all of you, and I promise to keep the videos coming. If you made it this far, comment cheese so that I can personally thank you. Have a good day, amigo.